I see now why like all of the professors just like take five minutes to get anywhere. It's like as someone who's technically like or technologically literate, Zoom still confuses me. It's just so poorly laid out. <laughs> okay. So welcome to the uh SolidWorks drawings, uh mechanical design skill dev. Um these slides that we'll be following today uh, were lo lovingly prepared by Morgan Stewart. And uh, we'll be going through the uh, making a drawing package for the Mule 1 injector spacer. And so uh, on slide two, what we will learn today, um, we'll, because everybody here is a bit more experienced, uh, we'll quickly go through, just like brush up on the SolidWorks drawing layout, um, go through UVR drawing standards, uh, create part and assembly drawings for all of our uh, unique parts that we designed in previous skill devs. And then we have uh, a bunch of slides going over some good and bad, uh, or like good and bad uh, examples of drawings for uh, parts that will be made in the machine shop. Okay. So uh, setup uh, is pretty is pretty simple. We have a, a link to the Link, link to our uh, club's custom templates for SOLIDWORKS. And if you don't have them already, you can install them uh, at the link and then uh, drag them into uh, program data, SOLIDWORKS, SOLIDWORKS 2020 templates. Um, if you don't have program data open, I'll just like move this over here. It should be in. Is that like percent up data? Uh, so in, in your, oh, like okay. in your boot drive, you should, uh, if you can't see it, you should just be able to go into view and then hidden items checkbox and then program data will show up here. Um, I don't know if you're trying to share you installing the. Oh the no! Thing, but we uh, yeah. I mean, I mean, all the the path is right there in the slide. Yeah, yeah. Um, I feel. Yeah, it's all it's all the same. I I just dragged my uh my my window over. Uh, but are you guys all good? Are we going to be doing a landscape, a portrait? We will be today. using today. We will be using uh, a size landscape. Uh, for all of our drawings, and that's the typical typical size for uh, for our drawings because our parts are quite small. And most of the time, I, I don't, honestly I've never seen a drawing in like a landscape format. I don't, or sorry, a portrait format. I don't know why we have them because like most parts could probably just be turned on their side and they make the same amount of sense. Either way, uh, when you open up a new file, sorry, I'll just. Um, yeah, if you open up a new file, uh, select drawing, it sh they should, okay, well, mine, mine automatically <laughs> does that, but they should, uh, you should get the uh, new SolidWorks documents um, template to show up, um, and then you can just click whichever, uh, whichever one you want. I mean, you should be using uh, UVR size landscape or a size landscape, uh, which, is what I, it, which is what I have open here. And, uh, We'll jump straight in once you guys are ready to go. All right, how are we doing? Good. Are we supposed to follow along, sir? Uh, if if you if you'd like to, uh, oh, okay. you can follow along. Um, I feel. Yeah. I think it's too late for me to follow along, but I'll <laughs> I'll watch you do it with in intensity. Okay. Uh, well, wait, do you not have the t or templates open or do you not have the templates on your computer? I don't have the mule one injector guy. Oh, that is okay. Uh, we actually have them on the propulsion grab CAD. Okay, cool. Um, so if you can, you can download from them. Is from that in, is it in testing and manufacturing? It is in, it's in the propul or like zero or one dash propulsion, um, 
grab CAD, and then it is in the skill devs folder. Okay. Um, do you think you could potentially quickly invite me to that? Sure. Yeah, I had the same thing. Same thing happened with Scott last week. I guess I'm you... not an admin on GrabCAD. I'm not cool enough. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Yeah. What? This is so it's so interesting. Right <laughs> okay, I'll see if I can find you. Oh my gosh, GrabCAD is like almost as confusing as Zoom. There he is, Mr. Matthew Wynn. Thank you. Uh, okay, you should be able to. Okay, maybe not. Maybe I can't figure this out. Okay, I, I don't need to follow along. No, I... add to projects. Never mind, okay. found it. <laughs> okay, you are your project owner now. So you should be, Sweet. You should now have access to. Oh, there we go. Yeah. Look at that. <laughs> Holy, holy Lord. Yeah, a lot. a lot. Yeah, thankfully, the only important ones uh, are, I assume, 10K um, and also propulsion. Oh, my poor SSD. It's holy okay. You files. don't have to download all of them. <laughs> no, it's okay. I think, I think I have a healthy amount of space still. I, I only have a propulsion in 10,000 uh, 10, foot on my, like, download on my computer. But access to all the other ones. Oh yeah, that's only like a gigabyte too. So we're in the clear. Sweet. Okay, so I see. Are you just uh, is everything downloading right now? Yes, sir. Okay. Um, you could you could probably just go and I'll I'll catch up because the graphcad sure. servers are pretty slow. Yeah, we'll uh, we'll have some more some more pauses, but uh, I will continue onwards. So now we'll grab our part from browse, and we're gonna start with the injector spacer post. So if you're working from the graphcad. I have to kindly ask you to not actually save any of your drawings because we have uh, we have some made already. Um, or Morgan had to make them for this presentation. Um, so, but you can like go through the motions uh, with me. Um, I have my own set, thankfully. Actually, I'll, I need to actually find these now. Um, I'm just gonna look through all of my all of my folders. <laughs> Skill devs. There you go. So post. So now I have I have I've selected my post. Um, if you don't have that model view open, you can select it in the top in the drawing section. It's just up there on the tabs. Um, and if I left click, I will put my little post uh, in the on the page. And dra or dragging away from that uh, that first view uh, will give you a projection of the or of if you drag to the right, it'll be a right side view up, it'll be a top view. Um, and then if you drag it diagonally, uh, you can also get, so I can, I can do projected view. And then I can, if I drag diagonally, I get the uh, isometric view. And so we want all of these, uh, we want these three views. Um, and now we're going to change each one of these views. Uh, first off, we have lots of space, so we're going to increase the sheet size to one to one. Um, and you might be like, "Oh, Devin, that's a huge isometric view." Don't worry, uh, we could actually use a custom scale and bring that back down to to uh, one to two. Um, and just because, like, I mean, there's no detail. Uh, it's just for uh, it's just for do you have to specify if the isometrics a custom scale or is it just yes. kind of whatever? Okay. Yes, you do. Yeah, the default um, is same as parent. Mm -hmm. Let's uncheck that. No, I sorry, I mean, do you have to like write something under like note scale one to two or no? Yeah, so okay. we will we will get there. Oh, okay. uh, don't you worry. But uh I like your keen attitude. <laughs> 
but yeah so uh, i know for some reason it just it, it does it, you, it auto fills these whole callouts and so we don't really care about those so we'll take them out um and we'll also or moving on to the uh to the right hand view we'll make that a uh a skeleton i think it's called or like a or just we're basically just showing our hidden lines um and then uh, and then that is all we need to do for the all we need to do for the right hand view. And uh, now we will uh, now we will uh, get to the labeling. So we'll add a note uh, as well to the isometric view and that's just in annotation. Uh, there's note up there. And then once you select it with left click, uh, you can write scale. Oops, any uh, any text on your drawing should be in all caps. Um, so scale one to two. And that's only for if the if the scale of your part, or not your part, but your either your projected view or your section view uh, or detail view, um, if that scale is different from the sheet scale, which is shown in the bottom uh, right corner here, uh, that should be denoted by a note. Um, sometimes they're automatically generated for things like um, detail views. But yeah, um, in the in the slides you can see we have selected the the shaded <laughs> the the sh shaded CAD model for some reason. Uh, it just takes up more ink when we have to print the drawing, so <laughs> there's no real point. Um, but yeah, you can leave it either as uh, or showing hidden lines or or not showing hidden lines. Either way, it's just there for to give the, like the machinist a better idea of where everything is um, in relation to the part in 3D space. However, pretty simple part, so not super critical. Yeah, moving along, this uh, brings us into our little interlude about th first and third angle projections. So we don't have the signal uh, identified on our sheet because we work primarily to the machine shop standards, which is a bit of a cop out if I'm honest, because we do send uh, drawings other places, uh, like for like Rainhouse, for instance. And so it's very important that if we are to send a drawing to Rainhouse, we must indicate first or third angle projections, because that is what is used in freedom countries like United States and its discount northern relative Canada. And so we uh, yeah, we use third angle projections here in uh, in North America, and that is where the projection plane is between the object and the observer. Uh, all the civilized countries over that use the metric system uh, all use first angle projection, which makes a lot less sense to me. Uh, this there, that's where the uh, part is between the projection plane and the observer. So. Like if you're looking at, oh, I had, I brought an example for this. I have my, my lovely Hellboy fist uh, piggy bank. Um, and, <laughs> and so, yeah, like first angle projection, if like, I, if you're looking at it this way, uh, the front view is actually the back. So the projection plane is over here. Whereas if the, if we're in third angle projection, the projection plane is here. And so this would be the front view. Um, again, makes no sense. I don't understand why first angle projection is used at all. Um, just because like third angle projection is how it looks like when you're holding it in your hand and looking at it. But either way, to each their own. Um, just don't mess these up because they're, it's very important to make sure your part is in the correct orientation. Um, but yeah, any questions about projections? Great, okay. Moving along, uh, so there's uh, some highlight or some important parts of the annotation menu are highlighted in in slide nine, um, and so we'll start off with or most dimensioning. Sorry, has done the smart dimension um, notes like you saw me add for the scale are on the notes, um, and then more commonly used in things like assembly uh, assembly drawings are uh, are the balloons uh, which can label part numbers. Uh, hole callouts are very important for calling out holes. Uh, who would have guessed? Um, and then our, our GD and T, our ge geometric 
dimensioning and tolerancing. Uh, in, in the yellow there, that is, uh, is very important for uh, indicating how a, or indicating some, in some ways, how a part should be manufactured. Um, and that's a, that's a whole another can of worms, which requires like an, it's, it's own uh, presentation basically, but, uh, we'll, I don't think we need to cover it in this drawing package. Um, and then some, some other circle related stuff. So center marks and center lines, which we will get into, but yeah, that is most of the important parts of the annotation, uh, bar. And so we'll start off by dimensioning our, our post here just by. Uh, selecting spark dimension and then clicking the outside uh, edge of our circle. And so uh, it rounds uh, automatic or the document standard is rounding to two decimal places. Um, but we know that our, that for one, our actual dimension is nominal or sorry, our actual dimension is three eighths or 0.375. Um, and you may be like, hey, Devin, three decimal places that in this tolerance box that we've definitely talked about tells us that the, uh, the tolerance of that diameter is plus or minus three thousandths of an inch. That's pretty, that's pretty tight. Um, but thankfully, uh, we don't actually care about the diameter of this, or we don't care about the diameter of this uh, post other than, uh, or within the, the tolerances that the manufacturer gives it to us. And so uh, we call that nominal. We say nom because uh, that is that is basically we have done nothing to the outside of the post. We uh, that is the diameter and the color and the shape in which the post comes straight from the manufacturer or our supplier. Um, and so that may be like it may not be quite circular. It may not be quite or may not be exactly 3.75 uh, inches uh, in diameter, but uh, we don't actually care because this spacer is just a post. No, this post is just a spacer, sorry. Uh, it's not doing any aligning, it's just keeping things apart. And so that's all we care about. And so I'll just move this down, or actually I'll, I'll keep this up here for now. Um, and then we also have a feature on the front of this view. Um, the these or this is our tapped holes or yeah, these are our tapped holes. Um, and any holes should be dimensioned um, when their shape can be seen. So, and that's, that is the same for um, like pockets and things like that as well. Um, the, the, or sorry. Yeah. So like this, this right-hand side view, uh, we can only see the depth of the hole. We don't actually know what the shape is. It could be a square. Um, uh, just, just taking this, uh, this right-hand side view. Uh, but because we know it's the profile is technically a circle, um, from this letter, from this left-hand side view, or I guess this is the front view. This is the right view. Um, given that it's a circle, this is the, this is the view that we will actually dimension it. And so we'll use the whole call out and that will generate this super overkill, uh, dimension for us. And so this is telling us that we have a, or our tap drill uh, of size 0.16 um, is going, is drilling down 0.6 inches. And we want a 1032 United National Fine Thread uh, tap basically to be threaded or to cut threads in that hole down three eighths of an inch. And so that is overkill uh, because well, we have uh, we have standards or tapping standards put in place in the machine shop, and so uh, we follow those standards to a T. Um, and so we don't actually have to give that much information because, uh, well, there like the, like I said, there's only there's only two things we actually need, um, and the, it is the type of thread that we want to have cut into this post, and the depth of that thread. Uh, the tap drill size is specified in our shop standard tap in, or sorry, tap in drill size chart. Um, I have a copy here. I'll link it in the chat because it's actually quite important. Um, I realized I could have probably linked it earlier, but if you're ever 
looking for a uh, or what size to make your common tap and clearance drill size holes, you can look in the machining resources folder um, in addition to in the chat right now. Sorry, I just, I, I swear I can't navigate this. Um, yeah, keep checking the chat. Okay. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, so that should bring you to the PDF of the common tap and clearance drill sizes. And so we follow that chart in the shop. And so whenever you say you want a 1032, we know exactly what tap drill size we're going to use. Um, all you need to do is tell us the depth of thread that you want. Um, in again, in the shop, we know what what type of tap we'll be using and how that tap cuts its threads. And so we'll know if how far past the actual end of the threads the hole needs to be in order to get fully developed threads all the way down to three eighths of an inch. That's because um, all this should this is a bit of a uh, a callback to our manufacturing methods um, presentation, but I'll uh, I'll just grab a picture of a spiral point tap, which is the most common tap that we use in the machine shop. And if I, there we go. So this is what a spiral point tap looks like. So we can see. Let's hope. I I don't know. This doesn't make it any better. It doesn't. <laughs> the. <laughs> Uh, this is the spiral point tap. Uh, maybe the, no, it's all bad. Um, this this tap, you can see it. It starts with uh, like underdeveloped threads, um, just to let the tap kind of start or guide itself into the hole. And then the gradually along the tap, the uh, the threads become more and more developed. Um, and so we know in the shop that we'll have to drill the tap drill slightly past three eighths in order to have fully developed threads all the way to a three eighths depth. Um, any questions about tapping holes? No, okay, great. Um, but yeah, so that's exactly why, oops. Uh, that's exactly why we do not need to specify um, so much information. A few important things are in fact the, oops, yes. It'll get mad at you for doing this, uh, for editing the, Okay, don't, just just stop. <laughs> uh, it'll get mad at you for editing the the callout. That's okay. Um, all we actually care about in this callout is the is the number. So two times um, the thread or the thread type, and then the thread depth. And so in this case, uh, our thread depth is not is not super critical. It's not plus or minus three thou. And so we'll leave the we'll leave our uh, our dimension to two decimal places, um, which is plus or minus 10 thou, uh, based on the tolerance box in this drawing. Okay, we made it through the uh, we made it through the tapped hole and the nominal post. And so we'll uh, we'll move on to the length. And so, like I said, the the actual critical part of this post is the distance between the two faces. And so um, as a spacer typically needs to be. And so, uh, I'll click on each edge and that'll dimension between them. And because this is a critical dimension, uh, we'll make that three decimal places. Um, so, and uh, knowing where to make, or knowing where to make your dimensions critical takes a lot of practice. And so if you, like, if you're uh, either the reviewer or your, or your super user um, kind of like, criticizes your use of your maybe like you're potentially over tolerancing that's okay again it just like takes practice knowing kind of like what what plus or minus three thou really means in terms of accuracy but yeah so as you can see we have 6.053 uh inches for our length and that is the post done um other than the higher other than labeling the scaled uh the scaled isometric view, which, uh, which we did earlier. All right, now for the fun part, we're gonna fill in all of the information. <laughs> and so right-clicking uh, the, the uh, title box, sorry, yeah, like the sheet format, um, sorry, the title block, uh, you can put in your, uh, 
put in your initials or actually it's probably best to just put your full name just so we can we can chase you down i can't spell my own name apparently um and then just the date you've created the uh the drawing oops six um and then as well as specify important things like oops the material which should have been specified in your specified in your uh, your CAD, and then obviously the quantity you need for this assembly. Um, this is drawing number one, and we have had no revisions, so or revision A, um, and drawing number one is, or specifies uh, what drawing this is of a drawing package. Um, and so since we're adding multiple drawings to the package, we will increase the drawing number as we go. Um, however, the uh, if we only have like one drawing, then we won't put a drawing number. Um, and then we can put our own, like just a, a description, a basic, or basically a descriptive name of the, oops, a descriptive name of the part in the title. So injector spacer post. And then frustratingly enough, we can't edit the part number. So we'll have to right click. I want to edit sheet format and then do this slightly roundabout way or not at all i guess um if it doesn't want to let me okay pal i am confused <laughs> try right click select other and then click on the thing oh what what that doesn't make any sense <laughs> thank you thank you matthew i got you yeah so then in this case we in the part number we'd use the the part number we used in our cad um, in our cat earlier. So, oh Jesus, hey, this is not working out. <laughs> <laughs> I'll fix this later, but- uh, a little stretch. <laughs> yeah, there we go. And yeah, so, and this just helps the machinist know uh, if we're looking at the cat assembly. Um, for extra reference, uh, we know what part number we're actually looking at. Um, so yeah, that is all the pertinent information uh, required. Things like the tolerance box shouldn't be changed, nor do you have to change anything or the, the little martlet symbol or any stuff like that. Um, and then the uh, someone and super user, the uh, someone should be the approved checker um, who goes over your drawing in the review process, which we cover later. Um, and then the uh, super user who will approve the drawing as well. Um, and that also comes in the review process. So I'll save my great work um, and then, okay, I don't, sure, nice. Um, for those of you following along at home, uh, please don't save it because it'll just save, or if you do, just like don't push your stuff to the grab CAD. Um, I mean, it's the same, so it probably doesn't matter, but just to be safe, I don't know what Morgan has done. But yeah, so, I mean, before we actually call this quits, it's uh, it's worth, kind of or just doing a quick or a final look over of your drawing make sure uh every all the information is clear there's no or ambiguity or um or like dimensions are hard to kind of decipher um and like this is relatively good it's relatively simple uh simple parts so there's not a lot of dimensions to be had anyway um so that's fine i think we uh, i think this is a sufficient uh drawing and so on slide 15, uh, for your reference in the, in the slides, the, uh, it just goes through where you would save this drawing as a PDF um, for its initial review. So make sure um, you don't want to submit the drawing file, as I'm sure you both know. If you, you can have your drawing file, but if there is no, if there is no CAD, then uh, it's basically worthless. And so we only work in PDFs in the... Um, we only work in PDFs when we're uh, uh, going through the review process. Um, they're also quite easy to annotate um, on the drive. So that's why, why we use those. Okay. Uh, and then obviously make sure you label it as a, as, or with both the part number and the uh, title, the descriptive title. <sighs> yeah. Okay. How 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 are we feeling for the post, guys? Pretty pretty complicated. Oh, okay, great. I think I can do it. <laughs> awesome. 
Okay, so we're uh, we'll move on from our post, and I'm not gonna I'm not gonna re go over like filling in all of the uh, title block information. I'm just gonna go over the actual dimensioning portion. And so now we'll open up the mid ring. So I'll just place my view, and I don't actually want this guy here. I don't want that view, so I'll just press escape um, and get that out of the way. So you can see here, we have some weird stuff going on. Um, the first being this, uh, this uh, we have this bull hole diameter here, um, which is the, sorry, I, I don't know if you guys can see this, but this is, that's the, uh, there's, or there's a center mark and then a bolt hole diameter and another center mark all kind of added in as one gross thing. And so we have to get rid of that because um, they don't they don't really like work together for some reason. It adds them as arcs and it's very annoying. Um, so thank you, SolidWorks. And so we'll delete all of those annotations and then add them in ourselves so we can properly dimension to them. And so, yeah, so that'll be in uh, center mark uh, is indicates the center of a circle or a cylindrical part right there. Um, and it's also important for indicating holes as well. And so we'll just add one to each. Yes, Scott, you have a question? Oh, you're muted. Sorry. So muted. Thanks. Um, in the post that we did, I just realized we didn't do any center lines. Um, oh, should... yes. I think so, it came with center marks, but should we have done center lines? Uh, so a center line, uh, a center line is most commonly used uh, when something or when we have features uh, in the center of a of a like a nominal thickness. And so, in this case, if we had, uh, say, I'll just use a sketch to help is illustrate this. If we had some perpendicular holes like along, along the center of this post, uh, like this sketch here, uh, then yes, we would need a center line along this or along the, along the axis of the cylinder. Um, however, because we don't actually have any, we don't have any, uh, any features dimensioned across a, across a nominal thickness, uh, we don't need a center line. Um, and the, or we know that it's a cylindrical piece because it is, we have like the, the let or the front view as a circle. Um, and, or additionally, the center line, uh, or the reason that the center line isn't used kind of like either way, um, is mo or at least for the shop standards is just because it, uh, for parts like these, it doesn't really add any new information and it only really tends to clutter up your drawing. But yeah, and um, for if we had or or another another reason we we would use center lines uh, would be for say like a if we had some nominal bar stock so the the width a, the width of this uh, piece of flat bar uh, can vary between uh, maybe like two to five thou and so. And if we need, if we absolutely need these features in the center of that part, regardless of the thickness it comes in, that's when we use a center line. And so that means it's up to the machinist to actually take the measurement of the physical stock they have and then put the, put the features in the center. Um, whereas if they were dimension, uh, dimension from the corner um, or from the corner or from like the top left corner of a of that same nominal piece of stock, they may not necessarily be in the center because it's not exactly like half an inch or whatever. I hope that makes sense. Yes, thanks. Okay, great. So yeah. Um, I have a quick question, sorry. How did you yeah. get rid of that bolt hole line? Oh, so I had to, I'll, I'll see if I can control Z and get it back. Yeah, so you can see, so I, uh, it oh. like connects a bunch of arcs here. And so you, I just click it here and then you can kind of get rid of each center mark. And then the, excuse me, the, uh, the bull hole diameter will follow. I don't know why it like, it makes it in sections. 
Yeah, sorry, I just have these other circles on my circles. You have circles on your circles? I, on those those smaller circles, I have a slightly larger circle around them. Oh, know. so that is from the that is from the split lines uh, that we use for FEA. And so if you right click the view, you should get tangent or you should be able to see tangent edge. Oh, okay. Um, and then tangent edge is removed. Thank you. Sorry, I missed that part. No problemo. Thank you. Perfect. All right. Yeah, and that's also on slide uh, 16. Um, yeah, so we'll re-add our actually useful annotations um, using the uh, center mark. Um, I click on the on the outer diameter um, just because it's one of the only circles or it's the only full or the only full circle. Uh, you could do a center mark for these arcs as well, but I mean, I mean, you could. I guess you can do whatever you want. I'm not your mom. Um, and then we'll also add a center mark to each of these through holes. All right. Okay, how are we doing so far? Great. Okay, so now the now we'll have a or sorry, we'll add a section view. And so the section view, uh, again, this part is relatively simple, but the section view just makes it very clear that the holes are are through and they stay the same diameter um, throughout the throughout their their journey through this part. Um, and so in drawing, we'll click section view up at the top, um, and then we'll make sure to select, what is this one called? The auxiliary um, section, or sorry, not the auxiliary section view. Um, we want the aligned section view. And so you can see it looks a little funky. Um, so what's gonna happen, I think, okay, it doesn't wanna do that correctly. Um, what will happen is we'll align the section view. We'll first click this left-hand circle and then the right one over here. And then it'll ask us like where we want to put the, the, the final leg of our, of our section. And so we'll make that tangent or not tangent, uh, like collinear with the negative X axis. And so now we've made our section look exactly like we have on the slides. And then we'll just confirm. I mean, you can see it takes, it, uh, it takes the, or so, yeah, so I, I'm sure you guys are familiar. Um, having made the mech 200, uh, this basically projects this, uh, it projects this view as if this circle was actually over here. Uh, but that's just for, it's just for clarity purposes in the section. Because, um, <clears throat> Like put or putting a like single section view. I, I point at my screen like you guys can see me. Uh, <laughs> having a section view across here only gives like one feature, um, which is, I mean, arguably, or sorry, it's a, it would give this left hole. Um, it would look exactly the same. But then we get a bunch of weird edges and stuff because we have features that are like behind the the section line, and so it wouldn't be very clear like what's actually going on. Um, because we'd have like a break line here, a break line there, break line there. Um, and it wouldn't really convey any information, but this, this aligned section um, just makes it very clear what, uh, what is going on. And so again, a little bit extra, I'll, 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 I'll say that much about Morgan's work, but uh, it looks cool anyway, and it's good skill. Uh, but yeah, so that's our section view. Uh, and you can see it's lab automatically labeled section AA. Now that we have all of our useful views, we'll get into dimensioning. And so we'll go through just with the annotation tool and start doing the fun stuff. So the OD uh, is the most, or one of the most critical dimensions. I want the fun one, yes. And so this should be three to three decimal places. Um, and we'll actually add a bilateral tolerance. This just makes it easier for us as the cat or as the, as the makers of the drawing. Um, if this, if we want this, uh, if we want this ring to slide within or slide into a 2.732 inch hole or, or bore, um, then 
we typically the base to or the base dimension. Yeah, sorry the uh, the the base dimension should be initially two thou under that. So uh, two thou under two point seven three two is two point seven three, and then we give a minus tolerance of negative three thou. So that means the maximum uh, the maximum this uh, this part can be is still a slide fit with the uh, with the other part that this will be mating with later. And so that's some kind of background to this or this tolerance. Again, like tolerancing is another thing where it just requires like some knowledge about uh, what uh, like what goes into making parts and what kind of two or three thou actually looks like. Um, and so uh, again, if if there's any like critiques on your uh, any critiques on your tolerancing? Uh, don't feel too bad. It's I, Roddy. Roddy just like rips into me about over tolerancing things all the time. So don't don't worry about it. <laughs> but yeah, uh, we'll move on and do some whole callouts, and then. So, we have an issue, because first off, it just gave me a diameter. Um, or just gave me the diameter of the drill, uh, which is correct technically. The clearance for a 832, sorry, the clearance for a 1032 um, is in fact 2.01. That's a, I'm looking at my drill chart that is on my, um, did I do this incorrectly? Uh, I'm looking at the, the drill chart that's on my wall. Um, and so it looks like this is a, this was actually dimensioned as a as a loose clearance, um, so that may have been that may have been my fault. Um, now that I think about it, either way, it actually doesn't matter what I dimensioned it because I know for a fact that I want this uh, hole to be a medium clearance. And again, like with the with the tap drills before us, um, we don't decide what the medium clearance is for the ten thirty two. We just know we want it. And so we'll actually just modify this dimension and uh, and uh, keeping the through all, because that's a useful component, we'll just say 1032 medium clearance through all. And again, that's enough information for the machine, for the super user to go in and pick the same drills that we were looking at on the, on the drill chart and make the whole like to your specification. Um, finally, the the inside, uh, the inside contour is a bit more complicated. This is a master cam profile, and so it must be it must be done uh, well with master cam. Uh, and it we can't really like dimension, or it wouldn't be worth dimensioning all of these features because uh, the profile is generated from a DXF that we get from our CAD, and so. Uh, however, the, there is no, there is still important information um, in this in this drawing. First is the, or sorry, in this uh, contour, um, and it's these corners here. So in the manufacturing, uh, in the manufacturing skill dev, what happened was, or we talked a bit about how end mills work. Um, and how we don't like sharp corners um, on internal features. And so that is exactly what we have here. We have some, we, we have corners on internal features um, that uh, are, are radius. So we can actually make them with an end mill. Um, and so in order to choose what size end mill, we, uh, or me, for instance, as the machinist, um, need to know what this radius is um, because that tells me the maximum size tool I can use. Um, this is actually a, or I'll dimension this here, or I'll dimension this one. Um, you can see it's 0 0.40. Um, we just need a, or we, we don't actually, or this is a reference dimension, uh, which is indicated with the brackets, which you can find on the dimension text side of things. Um, and this doesn't have to be high, pre or high precision. Um, it's just there to tell the machinist that, hey, I, like I, you can't use a half inch end mill because this corner is 0.4. And so that would mean that the, the maximum size tool we could use that's like a nominal end mill size would be a three eighths end mill to do this contouring. 
Um, one question. How do you know you want that as a diameter? Because I thought for these kind of things, you want it dimensioned as a radius. Or does it really matter? So in this case, the I know you can, I believe you can pick between it dimensioning as a diameter and as a radius in liters. Um, it's just like whether I need to multiply by two in my head or not. Um, and like you're right for, for arcs typically, um, like, like external arcs, um, you'll want to, you'll want to dimension the radius or it'll prompt you to dimension as a, or as a radius. But in this case, because we know we're providing this reference dimension, so the machinist knows what diameter end mill they need, supplying it as a diameter is just slightly more convenient. Fair enough. Makes sense. Mm -hmm. And yeah, like I said, in the, in the leaders tab on the dimension, you can change between diameter and radius. Yeah. And then just to be clear, um, any... Uh, any dimensions in brackets are labeled as a reference dimension. Um, I can I can talk a bit more or talk a bit more at length about those in some instances where they're useful. Um, but right for right now, that's just so we know what size tool we need to use. And I'm in the habit of say, pressing Control S whenever I'm, <laughs> whenever I'm in, the, in the middle of doing something. Uh, as someone who's had SolidWorks just like crash for no reason um, all the time, and so I'll just save that uh, to the same folder. Alas, we can continue on um, now that we've dimensioned all of the features in this section. Actually, I'm wrong. We haven't done that uh, because we don't know where these holes are in reference to the center of this circle. Um, and so we'll actually use a sketch. Use a sketch um, and make a wonderful bolt hole diameter. Um, you can even uh, click for construction. Um, and we've just made a circle uh, that intersects all of these holes um, and we can dimension manually dimension that diameter. I don't know where a good, great spot is. Um, mainly dim dimension that diameter. Come on, please give me, I just want the normal one. Yeah. <laughs> um, so you can see uh, because we made this a sketch, it's like, man, we've already defined this because it's, it's uh, it intersects all those or all three of those. Um, circles. Uh, but again, this is just like, this is just a visual thing. We need to know what the bolt hole diameter is. Um, and so we'll just, it's technically uh, like a driven dimension because we're dimensioning uh, this sketch, which is, uh, which is referencing uh, fully defined features. Either way, uh, all that matters is that we can see that these circles are on a 2.3 inch uh, bolt hole diameter. And any any bolt placements or bolt or screw placements, whether it be tapped holes or clearance holes should be dimensioned to three decimal places. It's very easy to do on the mill. So might as well add the extra, it's, it's like, it's worth it to add the extra accuracy um, just for our hole placements. Um, and so uh, three, three decimal places there, and we'll just specify this as bolt hold, oops, bolt hole diameter with BHD just so it knows we're not dimensioning just to this arc. But yeah. Okay, how are we doing there? Bueno. Great. Good. Okay, so we have done it. We have gotten our, or our front view done. Uh, our bottom view, or I guess this is, sure. Or let's, let's call this our top view, yes. Our top view is done. Um, and then we'll move to the to the uh, front view or the front section view. And all that really matters again, the section was just there to kind of illustrate that the holes go through the part. Um, and then we'll the only other information we can gain from this that isn't uh, already shown in the in the top view is the thickness. And this thickness as or being a spacer. Uh, or the entire assembly being a spacer, the thickness is important. And so we will have that uh, three decimal places. It is not in fact a nominal, uh, a nominal part size. Alrighty, so moving along, uh, I won't go through making the, adding all this stuff again. Um, so that is, 
that is fine. There is some more writing we have to do though. Um, and there is some manufacturer's notes that we need to add. So you can just specify a little notes section. Um, you can format it however you'd like, but just like a little list um, is important. And so, because we have certain things that may not be super apparent to the machinist. First off, the uh, we should refer to DXF or our uh, our like vector vector machining plot uh, file system or file type that uh, shows these curves um, for for like inner diameter inner profile. Um, and then uh, the second one would be to uh, deburr or deburr and uh, and remove sharp edges. Uh, this is kind of a given most of the time, uh, but is worth adding to uh, adding as a note to every single adding as a, as a as a note to every single uh, drawing just to make sure your machinist isn't handing you a, a sharp piece of metal. Um, but yeah, the, uh, the refer to DXF for inner profile is important, and DXF should always be included um, with the final revision of your part if it requires some master cam. Okay. So the same process falls for the, for the end ring. Um, however, the only difference, uh, I, won't, I, I don't think it's, it's worth redimensioning the entire thing. Um, but the only difference is the counter bores um, on one side of them. And so that's, uh, you can see in the slides, we get a, a funky little hole call out when we make this. And that's all I'm just going to care about in this quick little aside. Uh, when I do the hole call out on this counter board hole, I get this bunch of wacky stuff. And so again, pretty overkill. All we care about is the instances and the screw that's going through it. So the screw or the 1032 medium clearance, um, that is all uh, that is all important for the through hole. And then every term after this little uh, three quarters of a square um, is in reference to the counter bore depth and diameter. And so, these are the automatically generated uh, dimensions for like your typical socket head cap screw. Um, those are generated by SolidWorks. Um, always double check uh, your McMaster parts. You can see your drawing or you can see the drawings on the website. Um, you can double check the McMaster parts to make sure that the, uh, that the screw head will fit within uh, these dimensions, just to double check. But yeah, um, and then and additionally, like you can, I believe we edited edited these, um, we edited these in the actual CAD when we made them, uh, so it should be good. However, always always safe to double check because it's a uh, it's kind of annoying as a machinist to find out that your drawing is actually I don't want to say that uh, your drawing is a uh, is wrong and you have to like go back and do it or repeat a an operation. Um, but yeah, that's the only different thing with the. With the end rings, uh, I will delete that because we don't care. Um, and finally, yes, sorry. So, I was just reading the uh, tw slide twenty-two. Same thing as before for both the end ring and the mid rings. Um, filling out all that information, having our notes um, when applicable, and then uh, and then submitting a PDF. Uh, a PDF for initial review, and then once it become or comes to final review, the uh, the DXF file should also be included, so the machinist knows what to do. All right, we're almost done. Uh, there is like a, a bajillion slides in this presentation, but most of it is the like good and bad drawing examples, which are really good for your reference, but it's not worth. Or I don't think you need to go through them uh, all at once. So finally, we're getting to the assembly. We've done every single uh, individual drawing, and so now we're moving on to the uh, moving on to the assembly drawing, which is important for or to make sure the machinist knows how things go together because they're not always going to be uh, they're not always going to be involved in the projects you're doing. So uh, we'll open up the assembly 
I think I actually had it open already. Open up the assembly and we're gonna make a new configuration of this assembly. Um, and we will add a configuration. Uh, I assume you guys have used configurations before. Um, and we'll just call this exploded. Oops. Exploded. Pretty self-explanatory. Um, and then what we'll do in what, what we'll do in this exploded uh, configuration is we'll suppress the mates between. Where are they? Oh no. I wanted the uh, I wanted the the mates between the mid rings and the posts. So all of these coincident. Oops, I didn't want to delete them. Sorry. I don't know where this error. Oh, there you go. Sorry, don't delete them. We want to suppress them. I, I just what? No, that's I'm pressing the wrong buttons. Suppress. And then suppress. Okay, cool. So that should let us kind of drag these apart, uh, which looks pretty cool because we have that uh, that middle width, uh, middle width mate. And so now we have a cool looking, cool looking uh, kind of exploded, semi exploded view of our assembly. And so with the, in this or er, in this configuration, we will create our new drawing. And so in file, we can make drawing from assembly. And that will take this uh, this configuration in particular. And so all we actually need for our assembly drawing is an isometric view. As you can see, it's very small in this one. Um, but the isometric view uh, just kind of gives us the, the best uh, the best look at everything going on in the assembly. Um, and so I'll make sure that that's a bit bigger, even bigger still. Why not? Great. OK, there you go. And so that is we er, we've separated enough that we can see all the components go together. And uh, that is, or we've uh, we just changed the sheet scale to one to two, so no need to specify the scale. Um, and then we will uh, we will use uh, some tools to help show what parts are what. And so we'll use the auto balloon tool on this on this view. You can see it auto labels all of our parts, uh, which is good. Oops. Oh no. I accidentally undid. Uh, if you auto balloon and yeah, uh, and then you have to accept the auto balloon um, unless you'd like to change the format of the or the pattern. You can have everybody up here, everybody down there, everybody in a circle. Um, fun, fun, fun stuff. Fun stuff to be had here, uh, but. I will just uh, keep the square and then proceed to ruin it by moving everybody around. So they're just a little bit more contained. Oops. All right. Um, okay, yeah, so we just moved our uh, moved all of our balloons around just so it's clear what parts we're referencing. Um, and now we have we've given like we've labeled every uh, every unique part. Um, including our COTS parts as well. So that is great. And so now that we have our, we've labeled all of this, uh, we'll make our table of, or sorry, we'll go into tables and add a bill of materials. Um, also incredibly important. Um, the bill of materials has to be made after the, uh, after the assembly has been ballooned because um, that is what shows the, or that's what defines our, uh, our part numbers within, or our item numbers within the assembly. As you can see, that it auto fills our uh, our quantity, which is pretty sweet. Um, but yeah, and so that's actually all there is to it, um, other than filling in the regular information that is uh, that we need from every drawing. Um, this uh, this or every assembly drawing. Uh, will also like end up being um, like under consideration during a review because a poor assembly drawing can make it very difficult to know how things go together and how different parts relate. Uh, thankfully, this drawing is pretty pretty simple. Or sorry, this assembly is pretty simple. But yeah, you guys have any questions? 
No. Does it matter oh, where sorry. the? Sorry, you can go, Scott. Oh, yeah. Where was it, Devin talking? I wasn't saying anything. Oh um, yeah, I, I said no. Sorry, <laughs> I just assumed um, that with the pause. Does it matter where the bomb goes, or is it you can kind of just check it? No. Wherever? Yeah, just where wherever is con- most convenient. Where it looks nice. Okay. Yes. But yeah. I think that's um, all for my questions. Great. Um, yeah, I said that's all we have uh, in terms of uh, doing or in terms of like actual making drawings. Um, you guys are now officially uh, have been officially welcomed aboard the uh, certified drawing reviewer uh, train. So welcome. So I hope you guys feel prepared. Uh, I don't feel too much pressure because you'll just get better as we go on. Um, but uh, yeah, now you guys are uh, more than capable to kind of help out your uh, your subsystem and kind of manage. Your, like you could even meet directly with your uh, with your uh, subsystem members and go over like quickly what you're expecting from their drawings as well. Uh, which would probably like help you avoid like having to talk to each person individually. But not gonna lie, I, I won't I won't tell you how to run your subsystem. Uh, but I, I get like I, I urge you to uh, like try and tell as many people at the same time as possible because like the worst thing is just having to like address each case individually afterwards. Um, being someone who's had to do that a lot so far, <laughs> so yeah, it's a uh, it's worth your time. That's for sure. But uh, yeah, and uh, keep this skill devs or keep these skill dev slides as as a reference. The uh, slide twenty nine through eighty nine is all uh, is all collected uh, presentations made by the shop that show like good and bad dimensioning practices, and so you can use those uh, for reference as well. But uh, yeah, that's all I have for you guys today. Uh... Thank you. Sorry, I'm just <laughs> uh, saving this presentation just in case I, I ever get nervous. Good call. Good call. Um, yeah, where's the what to do? Is it in the drive somewhere? So this is in, uh, or this presentation in particular is in, uh, it's in support and skill devs, okay. um, and then the or it's, yes, yeah, so, so support off the main UVR page, skill devs, and then. SolidWorks CAD. It'll be the uh, the drawing skill dev. All right. If you guys don't have any other questions, then uh, this is meeting adjourned. Thank you. Uh, cool. Thank, thanks for organizing all these skill devs. Oh, great. no worries. Uh, happy to run them. Uh, I wish more like newer members came out. Um, but either way, I hope you guys can be uh, can be my denizens and go and spread the good word of of, of Rodney Cats <laughs> throughout the team. But, uh, yeah, uh, I hope you guys have a good rest of your Tuesday. Yeah, you guys too. Yeah, Thanks great. for having us. No worries. Thanks for coming. <laughs>